Yo guys, welcome to our video today. The channel is Nazvin. Uh, I'm trying to eat something here. Actually, this is uh, that's pineapple pieces. It's one of the healthy foods we have here in Africa. Let me know if it's available in your country. I'm done guys. Sorry for that. Today, like another day, we're going to discuss something very important. And we're going to talk about the early signs and symptoms of kidney disease that even uh, that that uh, often people uh, overlook. What uh, we are going to look at the early signs and symptoms of kidney disease, which uh, people often overlook. Guys, welcome. The channel is Nasvin. My name is Vincent, and kindly if you have not subscribed, I want to encourage you to subscribe. Because that's the best way in which you can always support us. And for those of who have subscribed, kindly I want to appreciate I appreciate what you've done for that for us. Our channel is really growing. We're in a journey to ten thousand subscribers. So guys, our views are really increasing. And we have a lot of uh, people, especially from the USA, United States of America, Kenya. India and other countries who are watching our who are watching us kind of like we always tell you uh, always share like comment give us a nice comment down below by liking the video you get YouTube to recommend us to the wider population so that the basic information can reach many people here we get to discuss matters medical in a simple language which we can always understand without using major uh, medical jargon and that is why we are authentic and uh, for larger population where we get to share our knowledge to a larger population as much as it's medical we make it as simple as possible without the medical jargon so that you get to understand kindly share the channel with your family with your loved ones with your even the old people who can understand this language also you can translate for them so they get to understand really what we discuss in this channel. So by doing that, you get to share very vital information. And at the end of the day, we get that quality of life or you get to save a life or impact a life the way you don't know. So we have, uh, today we have it basic, and like I mentioned, early signs and symptoms of uh, kidney disease that people often overlook. Like you know, kidney is a very important organ in our body and it has very many functions. It plays a very important function, especially matters hormonal. Uh, it plays uh, matters uh, detoxification, uh, like removing toxins from our body. It's, so it's a very vital organ and when it has challenges, uh, we get a lot of issues in our body. So that's why we say prevention is better than cure. And we want to get uh, also to prevent it ourselves from getting to kidney disease because at this time and, uh, and period it's very uh, challenging at that particular point. So uh, number one symptom where uh, the common signs which are overlooked is changes in urination number one where frequency when we talk about frequency urinating more often especially at night if you get yourself that you are urinating a lot at night, what we call nocturia, it should be alert you that uh, there is a problem somewhere. Secondly, if you have uh, also appearance, when your urine is foamy, bubbly, or darker than usual, is also a sign which you should uh, really arouse your mind over the same amount. We are producing less urine than usual or uh, experiencing difficulty in urinating is also 
another warning sign. So changes in urination is one symptom which we look at. We look at the frequency, like if you are urinating a lot at night. Appearance, if your urine is foamy, bubbly, and also darker than usual, uh, it should alert you that uh, something is not right at that particular point. Also, if amount produced is less than usual, it's or you are experiencing uh, uh, difficulty in urinating, so it should alert you that there's a problem somewhere. Number two is about swelling. When we talk about swelling, we're talking about what we call edema. Like uh, you have swellings in the ankles, feet, hands, and also face. Uh, so it's, it can, it's, a, it's a sign of fluid retention, and that should also alert you. So if you see this in your loved one or in yourself, so this also should be alert you that there's a problem somewhere. Fatigue uh, or low energy levels, feeling tired or fatigued without any clear reason, like if you've not worked and you feel really tired, uh, which is very and uh, which is very unusual. This can be due to build up of toxins and impurities in the blood. So this is, uh, alerts you that there's a problem here. Also, skin issues you may develop like itching. So persistent itching, which can be caused by accumulation of waste products in the body, is also a warning sign. Changes in appetite, like uh, loss of appetite, where reduced desire to eat, which will be linked to build up waste products affecting digestion. So if you have loss, uh, loss of appetite or changes, changes in your appetite, it should also be an alert that there's a problem somewhere. Also, nausea and vomiting. So if you have uh, digestive issues, like feeling nauseous or vomiting due, due to toxins accumulating in the body, is also another warning sign which can really uh, uh, alert you that there's a problem somewhere. Also metallic test in the mouth. If you develop uh, the, like a test changes where metallic test in the, the, the mouth uh, or you are uh, you or ammonia like breath uh, caused by waste buildup. So if you have that breath which is, is uh, like, or you get this kind of breath which is ammonia like also metallic test, you, you feel like your saliva is taking, testing metallic, it can be a sign of uh, waste buildup in the body, so it should be also alert you. Muscle cramps is also another sign where we, you may, due to electrolyte imbalance, cramping in the legs or other muscles due to imbalances in electrolytes, uh, like calcium and phosphorus can also be coming in. Concentration problems where we have cognitive issues, so where we have uh, difficulty to concentrate, memory, um, uh, memory lapses or memory problems or a general feeling of mental uh, fuseness. So this can also be a good sign which can show you we have a kidney problem. Number 10 is about high blood pressure, especially when we have hypertension. Elevated blood pressure which can damage the kidneys over time and also a symptom of kidney disease is very vital to monitor your blood pressure. So, and because with persistent high blood pressure, you are likely to lose your kidneys at the end of the day. With the, uh, also, we have shortness of breath, like uh, because of the fluid buildup, difficulty in breathing due to uh, retention of the fluids in the, body, in the lungs especially, or anemia caused by reduced erythropoietin production, Ethropoietin, in my previous video I talked about it, uh, it's produced by the kidneys, so when it is redu uh, it's reduced in the body, we have a lot of uh, this uh, fluid buildup, so it can be a sign of uh, uh, kidney challenges. Chest pain, uh, where now we have cardiovascular issues popping up, so chest pain uh, also comes in. If fluid pills are around the lining of the heart, so the heart really struggles because there is a lot of fluid surrounding the heart, so we may have those chest pains. Back pain, uh, because uh, like we know, kidneys are towards the back, so on the lower side of the abdomen, so you may be experiencing uh, kidney area discomfort. So pain in the back side or where the kidneys are located can also be a sign of kidney problems. For me, urine. Uh, foamy urine can be a sign of proteinuria 
or the proteins in the urine. So excess protein in the urine causing it to appear foamy and getting the damage of the kidneys. So on the preventive management, regular checkups is very important. Managing chronic illnesses such as diabetes and hypertension, health lifestyles where we we should take balanced diet, staying hydrated, taking a lot of water, exercising regularly, and avoiding smoking and excessive, especially NSAIDs, uh, non-steroidal non non anti-inflammatory drugs. So this should also be avoided because they are likely to damage the, kid, the kidneys. So if you experience any of these uh, symptoms, which is important to consult with the healthcare prof professional or further evaluation and management. So early detection and also treatment can prevent one uh, to prevent one to progress to kidney disease because kidney disease is very uncomfortable and also very challenging and uh, time consuming and also very uh, expensive, especially it can strain the resources which are limited, uh, especially money wise and also time and also uh, productivity of a person can really go down if they develop, if they develop this uh, kidney disease. Also it's a challenge to the family, one of the person is really affected by this. So <clears throat> unfortunately if you have developed this kidney uh, disease, I want to tell you how you can manage it. So managing kidney disease involves a combination of lifestyle changes, medical treatments and uh, more regular monitoring. So the key aspects of managing kidney disease, number one is about regular monitoring. By regular monitoring, I mean uh, frequent checkups, uh, regular visits to your nephrologist. Nephrologists are the, the doctors who specialize in kidney management and the problems to monitor kidney function through blood and also urine tests. Blood pressure monitoring is also uh, what you monitor, keeping blood pressure under control to prevent further kidney damage. So if you are an hypertensive patient, or so if you have a high blood pressure, it is good always to keep it under the normal limit, which your healthcare provider can uh, guide you on how to go about it, so that you get to prevent other complications. Also, the take of diuretics, uh, so uh, is very important. So, okay, blood tests can also be another way, thing which you monitor. I've talked about frequent checkups, I've talked about blood pressure monitoring, blood tests. In blood tests, we take the level of electrolytes, commonly done in our labs, blood urea and nitrogen, what you call BUN, and also creatinine and the glomerular filtration rate. That's how the kidney functions, glomerular filtration uh, rate. So very important to check over that one. On after regular monitoring, we go to medication part of it on the, as part of management. Uh, where blood pressure medications, especially AC inhibitors or ARBs to manage hypertension and reduce proteinuria. Diuretics like uh, Lasix where we use help to reduce fluid buildup and also swelling. Phosphate binders, uh, that's a special class of the drugs uh, where they prevent buildup of phosphorus in the blood. Uh, and also what we call erythropoiesis stimulating agents especially where we have ultrapoietin problems, especially for the patients undergoing uh, dialysis. Dialysis is the way now you go for, uh, let's say in the, in the normal language, or blood washing or to remove their toxins, where you are put on a machine to do that. Those patients who undergo that one, the, that, those procedures, they're likely to, lo to lose a lot of ultrapoietin. So ultrapoietin stimulating agents, ESAs can also be come in to manage uh, anemia by stimulating the red blood cell production, so very important. Vitamin D supplements were to manage bone health uh, because over the same. On dietary changes as number three, so low sodium diet is really encouraged to reduce salt intake to control the blood pressure and decrease uh, fluid retention. Also limit protein intake where too much protein can cause more waste or the, um, for the kidneys to filter. So it's very important that you choose quality protein sources and consult with your dietitian for appropriate amounts. Potassium and phosphorus also manage uh, to prevent imbalances. Food high in potassium and phosphorus 
should be consumed in moderation. Fluid management, monitor fluid intake to avoid overloading the kidneys. The, especially the patients with the kidney problems, they should monitor the amount of fluids they make. Normally your healthcare provider can also guide you on the amount of fluids you take so that you don't overload the, your, your body. Lifestyle modifications, that's also another way of managing this. So exercise regularly, engage in moderate physical activity to maintain overall health and manage weight. Quit smoking, because smoking can worsen the kidney disease and other cardiovascular conditions. Limit alcohol intake, so where you reduce alcohol consumption to avoid further kidney stress. Also, managing underlying conditions is a way of managing uh, the kidney problems, where diabetes control is very key. And maintaining blood sugar levels within the target range to prevent further kidney damage. Also, hypertension control to keep blood pressure under control with lifestyle changes and also medications. Number six is about prevention, uh, preventing infections, where you, you must get vaccinations. Stay up to date with the vaccines, especially the flu and the pneumonia, uh, as kidney disease patients are more susceptible to infections. So when you are suffering from this, we don't want you to get into other infections, so that's why you should be vaccinated, especially for flu and the pneumonia, because they can worsen with, uh, when you have the condition in situ. Good hygiene, very important. Practice, always practice hygiene to prevent infection that could stress uh, the kidneys. So normally you are taught on how to, uh, to maintain that good hygiene at that particular point so that you don't get stress to stress your kidneys. So guys, uh, the... so guys, also education and support is another aspect which we look at where uh, patient education is very key at that particular point where you learn about kidney disease and how, man how to manage it effectively. Especially this can be done by your healthcare provider who can help you to come up with the, uh, the strategies in which you can also be, be assisted, assisted. So where uh, you learn about the kidney disease and how to manage yourself. Support groups also for patients who are suffering with the kidney disease. They can join uh, support groups for emotional support and practice advice from others experiencing similar challenges. Normally support groups can be done very well. And especially what we see with the renal patients, especially the patients who have uh, these kidney problems, they have very strong uh, these uh, support groups and they can easily teach the other one and also they can easily share the challenges they face in this, uh, pro in this uh, condition so that they get to encourage each other and easily manage themselves very well. Emergency preparedness is also another aspect. You should know the symptoms. Recognize the symptoms of complications such as hyperkalemia or high potassium levels, severe or fluid overload or signs of infection, and seek immediate medical attention. Mental health is very important where we involve in our counseling by managing a chronic condition can be very stressful. Kidney disease is a chronic condition, so consider counseling or therapy to cope with the emotional aspects of the kidney disease. So by managing Kidney disease requires a comprehensive approach where having healthcare professionals from various uh, fields so, so that uh, they can help the patient. Also lifestyle changes is, is taught to the patient because you can't operate normally. You, you have to change some things and also patient education uh, done by the healthcare provider and also in the support groups can help the patient. So working very closely with your healthcare provider or the healthcare team that can help uh, slow the progression of the disease and also improve the quality of life. Unfortunately, sometimes kidney disease, particularly chronic uh, kidney disease, what we call CKD, can lead to various complications, many of which can affect other systems of the body. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, common uh, complications associated with uh, kidney disease. Number one is about cardiovascular disease. Especially hypertension, high blood pressure can both cause, uh, can cause and result to kidney disease leading to further damage of the kidneys and the cardiovascular system. Number two, heart disease. Increased risk, uh, they increase the risk of uh, heart attacks, strokes and also heart failure due to strain placed on the heart by poorly functioning kidneys and high blood pressure. Also peripheral artery disease because of the narrowing of arteries can lead to reduced blood flow 
to the lymphs. Number two complication is anemia, where we have low red blood cell count, where the kidneys produce, uh, because the kidneys produce uh, erythropoietin, how much that stimulates the red blood cell production. So kidney disease can lead to decreased erythropoietin, causing anemia, which can result into fatigue, weakness, and also shortness of breath. Number three is about bone and mineral, uh, and mineral disorders, where we have calcium and phosphorus imbalance. So impaired kidney can cause imbalance in the calcium and also phosphorus, leading to bone uh, like uh, osteodystrophy, which weakens bones and increases fracture risk. Vitamin D deficiency, so it can also pop in, where kidney disease can reduce the activation of vitamin D, affect, affecting the vitamin D absorption and also bone health at that particular point. Electrolyte imbalance is also another complication where we may have what you call hyperkalemia or a high level of uh, potassium, uh, which can lead to reduced kidney function, potentially causing a life-threatening heart rhythm, heart rhythm uh, problems. Also, uh, hyponatremia, where we have uh, very low sodium levels, which can lead to confusion, seizures, and also neurological symptoms. Number five is about uh, fluid irritation, where now we may have edema as a complication, where we have swelling in the legs, ankles, and hands due to fluid build up in the body. Also, we are, may have pulmonary edema, where fluid accumulation in the lungs can cause shortness of breath and also respiratory distress. Also, number six, we may have acidosis, where we have a lot of toxins build up. Because of the accumulation of waste products in the blood can lead to uremia, causing symptoms like uh, nausea, vomiting, a loss of appetite, confusion, and also pruritis or the itchiness. Peripheral neuropathy is also another complication where we have nerve damage. Because of the uremic uh, toxins, which can uh, damage the nerves, leading to peripheral neuropathy, and also characterized by tingling, numbness, pain, and, usually in the, and this happens usually in the hands and also in the feet. And also number nine is about complications is infections. We have, uh, with, the, with the, this condition, we have increased susceptibility, susceptibility of uh, an individual because of the weakened uh, immune system functions can lead to high risk of infection. So you are susceptible to infections if you have this kidney disease as a complication. Also malnutrition can pop in because of appetite changes. Reduced appetite and dietary restriction can lead to malnutrition at the end of the day, weight loss and muscle wasting. So patients with CKD, they can also experience weight loss, malnutrition and also mass wasting because of a lot of process which are taking on in the body as I've mentioned in the video. Number 11 is about sexual dysfunction where reproductive health can be a very big challenge. Kidney disease can affect hormone levels, leading to decreased libido, erectile dysfunction in men, and menstrual irregularities in women. Cognitive impairment is also another, is also another problem where we may have uh, mental health uh, problems because of the chronic disease associated with the... Uh, when one has chronic condition, we have uh, cognitive impairment problems which pop in, especially in the mental health aspect, which can lead to cognitive impairment and also depression at the end of the day. On the management of complications, uh, the basic uh, rules which you should follow, I'm going to mention around uh, five of them. Number one, on how to manage the complication is about uh, regular monitoring. Because frequent medical checkups uh, to monitor your kidney function and related complications can help. Medications as prescribed by your doctor, especially the blood pressure drugs, for anemia and also bone disorders and electrolyte imbalances, they are very vital. Dietary adjustment, where specific dietary plans to manage fluid, potassium, sodium and phosphorus is very important. Lifestyle changes, by incorporating healthy diet, regular exercise, quitting smoking and limiting alcohol, those are very important uh, things which you can do. And also dialysis or transplant is also another consideration on how to manage CKD. So advanced treatments such as dialysis or kidney transplant for end uh, what we call end stage renal disease or ESRD. So normally we consider 
uh, where what you call transplant when dialysis has failed. So early detection and the comprehensive management of kidney disease can prevent or mitigate these symptoms as mentioned above. So regular consultation with the healthcare provider are essential to tailor an effective treatment plan. So on the part of prevention of, of uh, the kidney disease, so preventing kidney disease involves adopting a health lifestyle, managing underlying conditions and taking proactive measures to protect the uh, kidney health and also the key strategies which you can employ to prevent this is number one about the healthy diet where balanced nutrition is very key each uh, uh, food rich in uh, fruits vegetables all grains lean proteins and also healthy fats number two limit uh, salt intake reduce sodium consumption to help control the blood pressure and also moderate protein, avoid excessive protein intake, which can stress the kidneys. Stay hydrated is another strategy to prevent the kidney problems. So adequate fluid intake, drink plenty of water throughout the day to help the kidney flush out uh, toxins and waste products. Regular exercise is also a way of prevention where physical activity is really encouraged. So engage in regular moderate uh, exercise to maintain healthy weight, reduce blood pressure and also improve overall health. Oh, number four is about manage chronic conditions where you control your diabetes very well. Keep blood sugar levels at the targets as appropriate. Exercise and also uh, do medication if needed. Manage hypertension by monitoring your blood pressure and also taking medication if needed. Also monitor cholesterol levels. Keep cholesterol levels in check to prevent cardiovascular complications. Number five is about avoiding smoking and limiting alcohol. So quit smoking. There's no option if you have a kidney disease. You should quit smoking and work towards uh, stopping it because smoking can damage blood vessels and uh, reduce blood flow to the kidneys, impairing their function. Moderate alcohol. Moderate your alcohol limit your consumption to avoid uh, kidney damage and also high blood pressure. Also, uh, very important in this aspect of the kidney disease, monitor over-the-counter medications. Like here in Africa, we have a lot of over-the-counter medications. This is one of the, uh, this can also damage your kidneys uh, big time. So regular monitoring your uh, over-the-counter drugs. So especially what you call the NSAIDs, avoid long-term use of non-steroidal inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs like uh, brufen. Uh, naproxen and which can harm the kidneys. So brufen is, uh, over the, is uh, very available here in Africa over the counter so kindly sorry guys so take care of it so that you may uh, do, you, it can damage your kidneys at the end of the day. Healthy weight is very key where weight management is very key where we maintain healthy weight to reduce the risk of diabetes and hypertension which are a major risk for kidney disease. Also avoid uh, uh, dehydration because uh, dehydration, uh, so you should ensure adequate intake of fluid, especially during the exercise or in hot weather to avoid weather, to avoid uh, dehydration, which can strain the kidneys. Number 10, reduce risk of infections. So by taking vaccinations, especially for flu and pneumonia, to prevent infection that can stress the kidneys, especially pneumonia and the flu, they really affect the patients with CKD. If they are affected by the flu and the pneumonia, it really brings them down. So vaccination has been seen to work very well with them. Hygiene practices, very important. Practice good hygiene to avoid infections. Also limit exposure to toxins. That is very key where now you, with environmental toxins, you minimize exposure to harmful chemicals and toxins, including household cleaner, cleaners and also industrial chemicals. Also, hygiene, also personal care products, very important, especially oil, the one with beauty products, which you use, you should be careful on their content because they may, very, may, may contain very harmful substances. Very key also, is about awareness and education where knowledge of uh, risk uh, factors be aware of personal uh, risk factors such as family history so if you are in the family where people have been affected by kidney disease be on, be on the alert 
age, also your age and ethnicity. So the, because with age, uh, also as you age, you are predisposed to see these kidney problems. And also ethnicity, talking about the black community, is very much affected with the kidney problems. So if you have those risks, it's a high time you get to check your medical or your medical professional to advise you accordingly because you can easily develop such kind of problems. Educational resources also utilize resources and education uh, to stay informed about the kidney health and that is the reason why I'm doing this video. If you, you do not understand some of the issues I've addressed here in the video, kindly go back and replay the video so that you get to understand the nitty gritties of this condition because it's a very common condition uh, which many people suffer from but now most of the time they are defeated on how to manage themselves. So education resources, read about the latest update on the management of kidney problems, kidney disease, so that, and also watch these kind of videos which can help you manage your, prob manage your problem of this kidney disease. So by, by integrating these measures into your daily life, individual can significantly reduce the risk of developing kidney disease so because with regular monitoring and product, proactive management of your health can lead to early detection and intervention by your healthcare provider, ultimately protecting your kidney function and your overall well-being. So guys, this video is for your own good and also your well-being. My name is Vincent uh, and this channel is Nasvin. Uh, uh, Vincent is not your average nurse because this is where we get to share matters medical in a simple language which you can easily understand. You don't need to go to a medical school to understand what we share in this channel. So guys, we love you very much. Uh, we share, kindly like the video. By liking the video, you get YouTube to recommend us to a larger population so that the basic information as this, which is very vital, can reach a larger population so that we get to save our life or to improve the quality of life for those who are suffering from the kidney disease. Guys, welcome and we love you very much. Peace, guys. Welcome to our next video, guys. Yes.